Optical activity is the only physical property of enantiomers that is different. Their melting points are the same, their boiling points are the same, their solubilities and typical solvents are the same. But because plain polarized light is itself physically chiral, the enantiomers interact with plain polarized light in equal strength, but rotate that plane in opposite directions. Let me show you what I'm talking about. First, make sure we're talking about plane, P-L-A-N-E, polarized light, which isn't normal light. Normal light is different it, uh, from plane polarized light. It vibrates in all planes that contain the axis of propagation, schematically illustrated here. But when it goes through a filter, and this is a polarizing filter like you have in polarized sunglasses, you end up with light that's vibrating only in one plane. So there it is. And that light, when it passes through a sample that's in solution, that solution will rotate the plane of that light, as illustrated here, as it passes through the sample, we're going through the sample. The longer that tube containing the solution, the further the rotation. The standard length is one decimeter, 10 centimeters. And the light emerging then has rotated. But you can't really tell that until you run it through another filter to analyze just how much that rotation is just by rotating the filter then ultimately you can determine how far that rotation was. That's a value that's called alpha. And when a solution rotates the plane of pol plane polarized light, we say it's optically active. Every stereoisomer that's optically active has a specific rotation, a, a strength of rotation that's characteristic of that compound. And that's a physical characteristic, just like melting point or boiling point. You can't figure it out. You just have to measure it to find out what it is. If you have a single enantiomer, it will be optically pure. And you would find that out by dissolving the enantiomer in solution, measuring its rotation, and seeing it is the strength that it's supposed to be if it's optically pure. Optically active solutions may be partially pure, and the extent of their purity is called enantiomeric excess. Call it EE. It's a measure of optical purity. And you simply can do a calculation. Hematomeric excess, EE, is equal to the observed rotation divided by the specific rotation. You just simply measure alpha, the rotation, divided by the specific rotation. And then you multiply this by 100% to get percent. That would be percent EE. It's simple. And that's an interesting value because it will tell us something about chemical reactions. You'll learn more soon. So understand that simply EE is an antimeric excess. You measure the rotation of a sample. You compare it to the full strength of rotation and you can tell how pure that compound is. And if you have a 50-50 mixture of the two, then you have as many molecules rotating to the right as to the left, rotating clockwise as counterclockwise. And so you have no rotation at all. So a 50-50 mixture has no rotation. A pure sample of an enantiomer rotates fully. Now one last thing. Rotation can be either to the right or to the left, and one enantiomer will do one, and one enantiomer will do the other, and they in equal strengths. And the designation of whether that Rotation is clockwise or counterclockwise is, is either clockwise, which is designated as plus, or D, little d, that's not a large d, that's a lowercase d, and counterclockwise is, is minus or L. And there you have it, optical activity. In the antimers rotate plane polarized light, in a clockwise direction or a counterclockwise direction. We call the solutions optically active if they rotate light. The extent of rotate light, rotational light is measured by percent EE 
and you simply measure the rotation and divide it by the specific rotation, multiply by 100%, and it tells you the percent of optical purity.